infinite complacency. People went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. On this edition of Into the Fray, I welcome Eddie on with me. And Eddie, you emailed me and you let me know that you've had quite a lot go on in your life. You've had a Bigfoot sighting and some other things go on attached to that, which we must speak about. And then you also mentioned that you've had some go- very strange and incredible goings on in your early years and we will hopefully cover of course whatever you're comfortable with but i welcome you on the show thank you thank you Sonny. i'm glad to be here i want to tell i want to i don't know where to start <laughs> wherever to yeah that's why i was going to ask you the same thing it's wherever you think that we should start where you feel comfortable starting i as you well know you've heard me i go all over the place and there's tangents and that's fine. That's how things roll. I enjoy that. So wherever you like to start is fine. Let's start from when I was a little kid. So I've died five times. And what my mama told me. Many times I had a heart murmur and a heart problem. So my mom would just find me, you know, laying on the ground with brick. And then, you know, I would end up at the ambulance or I'll wake up at a hospital room and for one time I saw myself from the ceiling looking down at myself and I don't know how what happened afterwards but I would wake up right the craziest story I have to tell and 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 People would tell me I'm I'm crazy, but I've I don't know. I was out in the yard, and next the next thing you know, I just drop had the feeling of falling, falling, falling. And then uh, I saw this tunnel and and all these people around, and this tall man grabbed me and said, "You know, he had the friendliest face though." pushed me and the next thing you know I woke up in the hospital. Now of course I was maybe five years old. Right? And years later, years passed on. I eventually uh grew out of that. There was medication and stuff that gave me and I eventually, you know, my heart started getting better. We were going through my mama's album had pictures and I said Hey, that's the man I know. I saw him. She goes, no, he died before you were even born. And that was my grandfather. So I didn't know that. But I know I know I saw his face. I know I saw him there. And I know he pushed me. So why? That's the craziest idea. And again, I don't have any answers for it. But it happened. And everybody can say, yeah, you're crazy. You, you're just hallucinating. You're just a little kid. You don't even know what you're talking about. But anyways, um, that happened. After that, there were so many events. If I lived down uh, South Texas, maybe five miles from the border, Mexico. So there was a, um, we lived kind of in you know, a, in a Y lot. So there was a highway in the front and there was a gravel road in the back. And we lived out in the middle, had like two, three acres. My dad at the time lived in a trailer home next to the other acre. And my mom and, and my sisters had lived in the house in the first acre. And then there was this road and then there was the railroad behind it. And then there was a patch of nothing but forest land. And I remember going up there. I was a little kid with a BB gun. 
nobody taught me the heart or anything. I just you go out there into the woods. I remember there was areas that I don't want to go to. I did not want to go to. And there was always somebody looking at me. You could feel it. It was weird. And then there was a situation one time where my sister, my little sister, she was riding a bicycle and she heard footsteps following her. And she said, uh, she thought it was me. So she would go faster and faster and faster and thought it was me. And then I was inside the house at the time. And she told me, it was like, I thought you were following me. I, I was like, no, I wasn't even there. But that area of the woods, you could hear screaming all the time. It was, it was uh, I thought it was just something going on. The, the neighbor had peacocks, so the peacocks would make a loud noise. So you know, my mama was like, oh, just the peacocks. So we didn't pay no attention to it. But we ended up leaving there. This is, comes down to this story and the reason I contacted you in the situation that I'm into now. So my mom and my dad at the time were in a divorce state and it was getting physical. And there was a lot of mafia activity because down there on the border, there's a lot of drugs, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of killings, all my friends, parents were getting shot, raped, you name it. That's what's going on right now. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it is. So I told my mom, I said, we need to get out of here now because they're coming for me. I was at the point at that time that I was one of my friends that would send us to the, to the river, we'd meet a little boat guy to throw a sack of, you know, marijuana, and we'd run across the fields, and then we'd cut it, you know, whatever, prep it, and everything. Well, all the little shavings from the saw, I would save it, and I would uh, roll up joints and put them in big pans, and I would sell them at school. <laughs> and maybe I'm sharing too much, but I was making, you know, money. And I would give mom, you know, all his money and stuff, you know, and I was like 13, 14 years old. But they were starting to realize that. And of course they didn't want they didn't like that. So they uh, started hitting up all my friends. And they would come in with like a blue light and just pull out their their guns and stuff and and you know tie them up and do whatever they wanted to and I said mom I don't want this to happen to us they're coming for me so we have to go so overnight we practically packed everything and just left but where are we gonna go right so the next option was um to go to, um, you know, be like, you know, it has been migrant workers from Texas. So they go wherever the fields are and work the fields. We didn't have a choice. So we took off, left everything. And uh, we ended up in Marion, Indiana. That didn't work out so well. So we ended up in a rental house in Hartford City, Indiana. By then, you know, I was 15 going on 16, I think. You know, I don't remember the year now, so I was still a little rebel. You know, let's skip school. I would, you know, I would go around to look at girls and stuff. I bought me a, a uh, like a BMX bike, and I got it all fixed up and painted it spray paint. Of course, you know, got it all really nice looking. And, and uh, one night I was just arguing with mom. Mom used to work all day long, 12, 14 hours out in the tomato fields. And to this day, I will tell you this, I will not eat ketchup ever again in my life because I see all the toads and snakes and stuff that goes into those tomatoes and they just grind it all up. Oh, and oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, I will not eat ketchup ever, ever, ever. If anybody looks at ketchup like, oh, it just gives me the no. I see what stuff goes in it, and the, they just process it. So, <laughs> so anyways, back to the story. I, so I arguing with mom about something. I said, well, I'm going to go watch the football game. And it was maybe three blocks from the house, so it wasn't that far. And so I took my bike, and I just went to the, the football game, and I, was, I watched the whole game. It was just a high school game. But they have the big lights, you know, the stadium lights. And I said, I don't want to go home. And I know, I know for sure that around 11 o'clock, those lights, you know, go off completely because the game probably ends at 10. Then they just let, you know, folks clear out. I said, I don't want to go home. I'm still, you know. So I stayed as long as I could. And lights went out and I said, okay, well, you know, I guess I'll, I'll go home. And now, to the best of my ability, I know I was leaving. I got on my bike and I started to come down so in in that neighborhood or in that city they have this trash lane behind every home so it's like the trash pickup lane and the street trash pickup lane and street you know so all the houses in that same trash lane is where the garages you know will be open so you can drive your car into the garage and close it it's the same little gravel trash pickup lane well, that night it was a huge moon. I don't remember it was it was dark, but it was, it was a huge moon. It was to my left, so I'm riding down this little lane, the street, and I would pass the street, pass the trash pickup lane, and then the next street. So on that trash pickup lane, I looked to my left, and immediately I saw a tall figure a, from the moonlight. All I could see was just, you know, the figure. And it was it looked like, you know, a man's figure. And I didn't pay attention to that. I was kind of like, what's this guy doing? Trash pickup lane just standing there. But everything at that point in time was super quiet. You couldn't hear, I couldn't hear the bike that I was pedaling. I couldn't hear anything. It was definitely quiet. Just weird. So I said, okay, whatever this guy's doing, you know, and I kept pedaling. And I make the turn my turn on the street to go to the to my to my house. And like let make a right. And that's I made a right. I don't know why. I said, uh, turn around. And I turned around, looked over my shoulder, and it was this biggest Hairy, muscle, almost bigger than a Volkswagen bug car. Just on all fours behind me. And he looked at me and he went like like in shock, like, oh, he saw me. And then it went shooting in between the houses like as fast as I, could, I can't even tell you. It was just so fast. It's almost cartoonish. The way it darted into these houses to go to the dark. Right? So at that point in time, I, I just hit the pedal. I said, I'm out of here. You know, this thing is, I said, I'm out of here. That was the last thing I remember. I don't remember getting home. I don't remember. I remember waking up in my bedroom, yes. And I could swear I could hear it outside the window. But mom said that I got home maybe at one. I know that the stadium lights go out about 11. So what happened within all that time? I don't know. And then another thing, 
I have this mark on my neck that showed up. I still have it to this day. And mom thought it was just, you know, me hanging out with just little girls or whatever. And it was a hickey. It's never gone away. I never had it. I wasn't born with it. After this event, it was just showed up on my neck. How or why? I don't know. And that's just why I have so many questions and so many reasons to to know. I know what I saw. I know it was there. I, mean, I know what happened, but why? Why me? I'm not a hunter. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a guy that looking for this stuff. Yes, I've had events in my life, but I can tell you so many ghost stories as well that's happened to me. I see stuff. I see people's horrors. I see things that I don't want to see. Can't sleep at night. Sometimes I just have to have, you know, something. I have to have lights on all the time. So why is this all happening to me? And I think it all goes back to the roots of me dying at an early age because it it makes me more vulnerable to this stuff. So yeah, I won't go into the woods. I won't go into you know a, a whole building. I won't go into some places I, I even look at and I say, nope, not happening. I'm out. <laughs> it's just it's just those things that I know that it's going to hurt me and follow me or or it's going to affect me in some way. The proportions of this this thing, this creature, was it yeah. was its upper body a whole lot larger when when you saw it s- standing the first time? Right, it's standing there. You thought it was a man. Did its lower body look disproportionate to the upper body? Was the upper body bigger than the lower, or was it pretty no, proportional? You couldn't see anything. It was okay. so dark. All you could see was the upper body shape across the moonlight. So all I saw was shoulders, head, you know, that's it. Everything was dark, dark, dark. Right. You couldn't see anything. So all I, all I could see was that, and I said, okay, it's a weird guy in the alley, whatever, you know. As a little kid, I was not paying any more attention than that. But something told me to turn around. And that's when it, you know, it's on all fours. So all I saw was arms and, you know, big head and the hair. And then it went, boom, like super fast lightning. What shape was its head? It was a man's head. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything different other than it was hairy. Yeah. You know, almost bearded. But, but he's, I remember he went. He went, his eyes went really big, like, oh, shit, ah, you know, and he opened his mouth, and and then he was gone, and he was trying to get to the dark. He's trying to go and hide. Why? I'm just like, I'm, I'm not even, shit, at that point in time, I'm maybe five, six, you know, I was a little kid. Why would he be scared of me? Why run? Why go hide? You could have just attacked me, you know, whatever. Who knows? I don't know. But it's like at that point in time, it said, Oh, I've been discovered. Ah, it was darting to the darkness. Eddie, about how far would you guess you were away from it? Maybe 20 feet. It was creeping up behind me, was the, was the weirdest part. Because I, if something didn't tell me to turn around, I would have not known it was creeping up behind me the whole time. So I, the moment I saw it on the on that lane, on the trash lane, I kept going, and then I made my right turn on the street, and I wasn't going fast. I wasn't like you know, I was just you know creeping along because I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to go home and argue with mom again. I didn't, you know, I was taking my time. That's why. I stayed at the stadium the whole time or the, the little complex or whatever. 
I stayed there the whole time longer than normally would because I didn't want to go home. So I was taking my time and made my right turn. And then something told me to just turn around. And then there it was. Well, and also if it's creeping up on you and you have this feeling to turn around and you see it, why does to it, why does that make a difference? If it was planning on grabbing you, it still could have grabbed you even though you saw it. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe it was just I don't know, toying me. Could be. But when when the the moment that I turned and its face when ah he saw me or kind of like that, you know, eyes went really big and he did have like the long teeth, the um you kind of like, you know, the, uh, like, you know, like not, not, not canine, but he had longer teeth that, you know, he looked like he was like, um, meat eater. But, but he didn't, it's like he didn't want it me to see him. He didn't want to be discovered. Then again, this was, this city was, it's just a, um, it's a farmer's town. It's a small, you know, not a big city. I mean, I'm probably, probably sure it's grown a lot since then, but it was um, mostly farmlands. And I'm pretty sure that it was just eating off the people's trash. That's why it was in the trash lane. But, but again, I wasn't in the woods. I wasn't in, you know, some weird remote area, nothing like that. This, this happened in that just city and then the whole question to me is um what happened in the hour after that that mom claimed i didn't come home until then and it just uh, i just don't remember anything and then the weird mark on my neck that is the biggest question to me Have you come across a picture or a video that you you go, oh, that's that's pretty close to what I saw? No. No, because this thing was on all fours, crouched down, and then when I saw it, it, you know, raised his head up, eyes go big, and then it was boom, 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 almost really cartoonish, almost like the Flintstones. <laughs> Just you know, legs moving and just gone. But even even just in the face, you haven't seen a picture or video that looks similar to that. Not really. Not really. It was a dark brown colored hair, and it was very um, was big. I mean, I'll tell you, this head was probably like almost two feet in size it was huge the muscles on this thing arms were just long and, and just big big like uh, i don't know if it's like and nobody can have arms that big it was just huge but it, because it was on all fours i didn't see anything else you know, when the, the legs and stuff like that when it started darting off i said boom i'm out of here not a hit the pedal on that bike, and then that's the last thing I remember until I woke up hours later in my bed in the bedroom. I remember walking the door, I remember putting the bike up, I remember anything. Mom says I talked to her, I remember talking to her. It's just all around weird. But this is again the reason I have so many questions and the you know, reason why I'm here. So the teeth you say are, because when you think of a Bigfoot, they are slightly more like human teeth, right? They're, I mean, yes, they they eat plant and and animals. You say this thing looks like. It was extremely carnivorous because the teeth were a little longer than they should have been, and that's all the teeth, mm -hmm. not just the canines, no. right? No, just the canine teeth, the, the ones oh. that you know, that 
they actually those were even longer than normal. Mm. The other teeth were normal, like human normal teeth, but he had longer canine teeth that the ones that, you know, stick out. I mean I would say it didn't want it to attack me, otherwise it would have it would have. Right? What was creeping up on me was the weirdest part because I wasn't expecting to turn around and see that, obviously. I was just, you know, taking my time, cruising, and said, I'm not going to get home and argue again and just let mom go to bed and then I'll, I'll, you know, just show up or whatever, whenever I do. But for weeks afterwards, I couldn't sleep. I found a grocery my mom had for, you know, for her prayers and stuff. So I picked that up and I put it on. Because at that point in time, I knew nothing about all this stuff. I knew nothing about Bigfoot or anything or whatever. So I thought it was a demon. I said, I, I thought I saw, you know, a demon. And what else, you know, lurks in the darkness, stays in the darkness other than demons? I mean, what else? So I put the roast in there and I, I kept it on for 10 years. I never took it off. It, it finally rotted away because it it was one of those uh, thread kind of groceries. But I thought for sure I saw a demon. And then I still, until recently, I started, you know, listening to the show and other shows and stuff like that. This all came to make more sense what happened or what, what it was. Because for many years, that, that's what I thought I saw. I mean, there's nothing like that that creeps, lurks, and stays in the darkness, you know, than that, I thought it was definitely a demon. Well, I mean, to me, and I'm sure that you, you probably feel the same way, don't you think that it's strange that if, if, you're, if you're saying it's a Bigfoot, there should be a picture or a video, I mean, purported real or whatever, that's not what I'm, you know, what we're getting at, but shouldn't you have come across a picture or a video if you're thinking this is a Bigfoot that would have been at least similar to what you saw if it, if it is a Bigfoot out there? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it definitely would be similar. I mean, it's, it was just, it was so fast. Everything was so fast. I, I turned, I looked, it went, ah, I went, ah, and I pedal and I was gone. So it was maybe three or four seconds that I realized that, realized me, and then it was shooting off to, you know, to the middle of two houses, and I said, I'm out of here, but yeah, I remember hair, I remember arms, muscles, you know, the thickness of his head, and eyeballs, and teeth, and then, yeah, it's tough to, I got a mental picture of it, but yeah, there's there's similarities out there, so it has to be what it, what it, what I saw. I mean, I don't know what else to, to call it. But the only thing, of course, the couple of things that throw me off are, as you said, the the two hours missing afterward, and then and you know, hey, you were very young. Maybe you were in shock. You know, playing devil's advocate. Maybe you were in shock, and you just plain old don't remember riding home because you had that terrible scare that that could be but you then end up with a physical mark on your body which you still have to this day right so yeah so many questions there right okay yes i don't know if it marked me or what happened to those hours or did I, was I just, you know, so out of it that I don't remember doing all, all that. But mom said I even, you know, talked to her when I came in because she was worried about me being home, you know, wasn't home. So 
you tell me this, what stadium or what location, you know, closes at one o'clock in the morning. I mean, it, especially at a little high school football game. By 11 o'clock, I know it was out. I know it was right after that time. I know it's going to take me with three, four blocks to get down to the house. So if mom says, and this is just, yes, I could have been in shock, correct. And I don't remember that. But if mom says, I didn't talk to her until one, one something in the morning when I came in, what happened between them? Right. Because you're, you're asking, you know, my point of view, but mom was totally different. She wasn't, she didn't see what I saw. She didn't see anything. She was just at home worried where I was at. So what happened that I didn't get home until then? And why has got this mark on my neck? Well, and that's true because the whole point, the whole reason you didn't, you went to the football game and stayed until it was done and, you know, lights are going off. Okay, time to get home. Yeah, you probably didn't want to because you didn't want to argue. However, you also weren't trying to stay out until 1 a.m. because then you really would have compounded the problems and probably been in trouble, right? Absolutely. I mean, I was 15, 16 years old. I wasn't, you know, arguing or wanted to argue anymore. That was the whole point of staying out and avoiding confrontation with mom, you know? But so, so her point of view is like, I was out with little girls. That's why I got the mark on my neck. That's what she was thinking. But it's still there again. Like I said, it's still there. So is and that it, what it looks like? Is this circular shape like a hickey? Is that why she thought that? No. No, it actually is like a half star, half moon. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. I can send you a picture. But yeah. Yeah, so I, would, like, I would appreciate that. I can't quite picture that. I have... It looks like, okay, like a, imagine a half star, you know, the pointed signs, and mm -hmm. then the other one's rounded out for the bottom. What in the world? <laughs> yeah, so it's a half star, half moon. If you mash them together, that's what it looks like to me. I'll send you a picture. I would appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, yeah. I, I always, if somebody mentions a picture, you've probably heard me say this because I like to put it out over the airwaves when someone mentions this. It, do you want to just, for me to just see this or for everyone to be able to see this? No, it'd be fine. Everyone can see it. Okay. I, I want answers. Yeah. I want answers if something like this happened to someone else. I want to know why. I want to know why. If I was marked, what is the point of marking me that? I don't know if it's something that anybody could say. Maybe it would be a lot better mystery than know what it is because it's scary that I've been through that. And I've probably seen a lot of other stuff. Um, let me tell you those stories all through my life. But I remember in Texas, there was always the feeling of somebody watching me. There was a, the room, the back room, facing the, you know, the back where the where the gravel road was and stuff, where the woods were. There was always like a bang. Somebody would slap the back of the house, and nobody would sleep in that room. So, <laughs> so my mom's room was over in the front, and then I would. I would actually, I only slept there maybe twice because of that. Now in Texas, it's so warm and hot that I always slept with the window open, right? It just had a screen window a screen. and uh, just to let some of the cool air in and stuff. It just always seemed like something was watching me. And then again, there was always the screens and then the slapping on the wall would just wake you up. My Grandma would sleep there one time, and she said she felt somebody sitting on her that was really heavy and would, wouldn't let her get up. There was times she would see she would see up she would sit up front on the porch in her swinging chair. She's she's 
this is you know God bless you, babe. She would see these lights in the woods. Just little old lights. And she would ask me, it's like, you see that? Do you see that? And you know, as a little kid, I was like, yeah, whatever, probably you know, somebody out there who knows. But she would see these lights every night, every time. I'm not saying this is all Bigfoot related, but nobody could sleep in that room. And so I put up a bed, like a little twin bed next to mom's bed in, in her in her actual bedroom because I was like, I, I can't sleep in that room, so I can sleep in here. So I put up a little twin bed, and mom knew at the time, you know, that, that I was being attacked, that he might be in sleep, and so I was a little kid. And this is, again, before all this Indiana stuff. This is back in Texas when I was younger. One night, I woke up. I heard, I heard a, a woman crying, and I said, "Mom, mom's crying." You know, I felt bad. I didn't want mom to cry, so I said, "Mom, mom, I'm making my way to where the crying was, which is in the restroom." I said, "Mom, and I'm, mom, no answer, no answer. I just hear crying. I hear this woman crying." So I go open the door, and there's a silhouette. It's a little of a, of a woman right, sitting there. But it wasn't mom. So, of course, I went, boom, ah, ran out of there, back straight to bed, and covered myself up. That was a weird situation. Very weird. But I know it happened. <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things, I guess, that, again, it comes back and it all stems back to, to, to me. I guess I wouldn't say it, having a second sight, but to me passing away, seeing what I saw, started all this. And then, again, no, I don't have no answers for it, so. Eddie, have you ever seen, besides the orbs and lights in the woods, have you ever seen UFOs or lights in the sky? No. No, and, and I'll, I'll tell you the way I, I am normally, I normally just keep my head down. I'm one of those people that just shy and not. Not want to be outdoors. Not want to be out. No, I have to obviously do what I need to do. But as far as me just staring at the sky or at nighttime going out and to the woods or nothing else. I used to be that way when I was a little kid because I was, you know, a lot more um, open and free willed and you know rebelish and. You know, at that point in time, just nowadays, it's just, no, I don't, I don't want to go there. Have you ever told uh, your mom or anyone in your family about the, the creature that you saw that night? Yeah, I told my mom about it. She said she thought it was crazy. But, I mean, you went into, mama. you went into, I mean, detail, and you told her mom, I was so scared, it was crazy the way it moved, and it, it looked like it was coming after, like, you told her everything, and she was like, nope. Yep. And... And mom was very, very religious again. That's why I got the rosemary from her, obviously. But she's very Catholic, very Mexican Catholic religious. So, you know, she didn't believe in any of that stuff. So, you know, she, she thought I was just crazy. Right. Making stuff up because I was out with little girls. That's what she believes in her heart. You know what I mean? And she can't. She was really mad at me. I got home so late. I remember that the next day, weeks after. <laughs> but yeah, for weeks there, I couldn't even sleep. It just impacted me so much. Impacted me that still to this day, I still, you know, want answers. I, I know what I saw. I know it was there. I know it was physically creeping up on me. 
And then what the hell happened afterwards? Now, listening to some of the stories and stuff that I've heard, I think, yeah, maybe, maybe UFO was probably involved in this. Maybe I did get picked up. I don't know. I really don't know. And it, it could have been a Bigfoot. I'm not saying that it's not. It's just with these other factors in there, I I don't quite know where to place, you know, the, the peg in, in which hole to place it in. Uh, there is certainly Bigfoot in Indiana. Uh, I wrote down that 21 out of 92 counties reported seeing Bigfoot more than once. And I oh. actually found a BFRO report from... Blackford County, Indiana, that's where you're, you're, the city that you're talking about is in that county where two brothers heard uh, strange screams while target shooting. And then the next day they went to that area and they found really strange, deep scratch marks in a tree about seven feet high. So, I mean, the two hours missing and the mark is extremely, uh, really nefarious to me. That gets into really dark implications for me. Because I've talked to so many people that have had that. And by the way, you mentioned something that I've heard quite a few people say on the show. And that's the fact that years later, there's still going to be lights on at night. They're not messing around with no, oh, it's pitch black in here to go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, there's so, there's so many questions for that. I know, I know that... Um, it's got to be like 11 o'clock, 1130 at the latest that I was making my way home. And it's just the street lights that, you, you know, that was because, and it's only on the, that street, not in the uh, trash lane where this thing was first saw the, the image. That those, those are completely pitch black. The only thing, the reason I saw the, was because of the moon, the moonlight against it. And it was to my left, so it was facing east, you know, where the moon is coming coming up. So at that point in time, if the moon is about right there, it had to have been around 11, 11, 30. When I saw it. It was maybe, I don't know, it was not fully across in the sky, but, you know, a little bit left so it wasn't it wasn't the moon wasn't completely rotating over if it was rotating all the way then i would have probably never seen this this thing seen it because if it's against the moonlight to my left so it hadn't could not been that late and then they lost all awareness of where i was at now again listening to some of the stuff that i've listened to I think that, yeah, UFOs or aliens are protecting them somehow or another. Maybe there was some influence there. I don't know. I've been trying to get answers, and I've never run across anything like what I've been doing. No, and I've never heard of a, of a mark on a person's body quite like that. Have you ever come across anything even close to that on any other show or blog or internet, anything? No. Like, I'm extremely heard. interested to see once we post the picture with the episode to see if anyone comes forward about, uh, about I mean, any of this, of course, but. Okay. You, your, one of your opening lines in your email was, you said, I've been marked. That's what you said. So do you think that someday you'll, you'll see that thing again? I mean, hopefully not <laughs> really, but do you, I, I don't know. Do you, do you think there's an end game to that? Are you worried about that? I'll tell you this. I've had dreams where I am in the field somewhere. You don't, it just, all you see is darkness in the shades of trees to the left. And I'm going on all fours fast, fast, fast. Really, and then you jump maybe 30 feet in the air, grab a tree limb, and then fly across the other way. And then I wake up. And then I have 
dreams of me going across, you know, uh, railroads and just jumping 20, 30 feet in the air and then just landing. It's like, it's like, it's like it's, this thing has, I don't know, attached somehow to me. Because why would I dream that? Why would I be thinking, you know, I could fly through the air and then being on all fours? I, of course, I don't do that daily or anything like that. So why would I dream that? That's another piece of a puzzle that I'm like, what, what is the meaning that I'm having those dreams? It stopped maybe, you know, five, ten years ago. I don't, I don't have those. I haven't had one since. But again, I stay away from the woods. I stay away from camping. Anything has to do with any anywhere like that. So I'm thinking the mark, maybe some kind of. Uh, I will see you soon or whatever, <laughs> kind of message. I don't know. Or wait for you to be uh, located. Maybe. And at the same time, I have the urge to actually go back to Indiana. You do. Just to just to finish what got started, I guess. Mm -hmm. Have you had any activity of any kind in your home recently? Oh yeah, of course. I always see stuff. Yep. There's all the shadows and stuff. I I I do believe I since I, I got baptized, I do believe Christ, obviously, I, I, um, I pray at night, and I, you know, but there's always shadows, there's always stuff that follows me. And I don't want to go into old buildings. If it's an old house, I don't even want to come near it. I can sense it, and um, there's always things lurking around me. In the shadows. I keep lights everywhere. Uh, I, I do. I do. I don't do any of that can stuff because I'm scared that I'll see something that I don't want to see. <laughs> you know, because at the middle of the night, I will wake up. I'll be scratched. I'll be attacked. I'll be hit. Pulled. My legs will get pulled. Covers will be taken off. I try to, you know, put holy water around the bed before I go to bed. At night. You still do that? Yeah. Or alcohol. My mom told me to put rubbing alcohol around you know, before you go to bed. And you always got to wash your feet because that's where the uh, darkness begins. And so you always attack your feet first. At my mom's house, it's an old house in Arkansas. And I would go stay with her. And I could tell you many stories because. So I live in Memphis, my mom lives in Arkansas. So I would go, you know, every weekend to go see her. You know, I'm a good son, I'm gonna go take care of mom, whatever she needs, mow the yard, do whatever she needs me to do. I would come back, you know, the next day and, and, and go to work and stuff, whatever. So I would stay there. I would never sleep in the back room. That was the room that always felt really bad to me. So I would sleep on the couch in the living room. Well, the couch is right there where the hallway is to the rooms. And I was sleeping one night, and I was sleeping on my on my stomach, so I had my feet towards the hallway. And a bony hand grabbed my foot, picked it up, and I, I thought it was, you know, mom messing with me. So I was like, ah! I, was, I pulled it away and woke me up, obviously, and, and then nobody was there. And at that point in time, I was just like, mm, turn on the lights. <laughs> was another instance where I was sleeping on the couch as well. And I heard the rock across the, the kitchen. I, said, I know mom ain't running. She's too old. And so I woke up and nothing or nobody was there. So many instances. I won't. After that, I will not sleep in mom's house anymore. I would just go there for a few hours and come back. But mom told me one time, and this is just her 
interpretation. So she kept the window open and the window was facing some peach trees and she had an apple trees out there in her yard. And she woke up and she said, I heard grunting and snorting. So she woke up and said she looked out the window and there was something eating the, the peaches or snatching the peaches off the tree. But those is like maybe 10 foot trees, 10 foot high. So there was like no up there. He said it looked like an animal out there just getting getting the, the peaches. I said, Mom, there's nothing that big that could reach up there and get it. He said, well, I just closed the window went back to bed. So this is just her own claim. Because she lives out there in, in the sticks in Arkansas. It's not, it's not rural. There's no city lights. There's nothing like that. It's out there you know, nothing but woods all around her. So she saw something that, you know, mom being, you know, religious and you know, she's like, ah, whatever. It was just an animal out there eating the peaches. So I said, okay. I'm not going to argue with her about it but, or tell her anything different, but there's always stuff going around us, I guess. I don't know if it's because we're of Mexican descent. I don't know. I've heard stories that maybe that, that does um, allow you to be more open to things. Is it just me? Is it because I've died several times in my life? I remember always falling. And that's why I'm scared of heights, because I remember just falling and waking up in the hospital. So, yeah, I, everybody's like, why are you so scared of heights? Well, you don't know my history. Yeah, I cannot do a roller coaster, that's for sure. Now, I know that your, your mom is religious. Uh, with her teaching you about placing rubbing alcohol around a bed mm -hmm. is that because she personally had an experience that prompted this or was this just part of you know her religious beliefs that she was taught to do this i think she was taught to do this i know she's seen stuff before and i could i could tell you well she, she tries to deny things. there's people that just deny stuff they see it and they go oh no it's just probably you know whatever it's the wind, it's this, that, it's the bear, it's whatever. There's people just to deny stuff. And there's people that actually know what they saw and know yeah, they, they have to have answers. Like me, obviously, I, I won't have answers to it. I'll tell you a story. My grandmother and I are one day separate from our birthdays. My grandmother's obviously deceased now. But she would tell me so many stories when she was growing up one of the most famous stories um that she told me she never told she didn't tell my mom because my mom doesn't believe so she wants to deny stuff and this and that so my grandmother married me obviously grandfather and stuff but he was an alcoholic which you know that just runs in the family <laughs> my grandmother told me a story that he would go to a bar, you know, a few miles away on a horse because he lived in a rural Mexican, it was a Monterey city, but it was very remote at that, point, at that time. Um, and so he had a horse and the horse would, you know, take him to the bar and whatever. And the, he would get so drunk, they just put him on the horse and the horse would, you know, lead him back home. And she would wait on him every night and just get him off the horse, put him to bed. So she would sit by a window and wait for my grandfather to get there. Well, weeks at a time, she would see there was the little, obviously, gravel road. She would be staring out from the window and there was, she said there was a, an orange tree, or like an orange uh, kind of tree road outside. And this little girl would come out and she would be signaling my grandma to come here, come here. And my grandma would say, go home, go home, it's late. Go home, little girl, you know. 
it happened for weeks and weeks. She said it, it happened a lot of times. The little girl would just come out of the tree and say, come here, come here. And it was all raggedy dress, she said. And, and then she goes, well, you know, one day they tore that tree down because they were expanding the road and making it you know, more accessible and more vehicles and stuff. So when they tore that tree down, that the, um, the road crew or whatever found a whole bunch of jewels down the middle of the bottom. And then never heard from them again. The road wasn't, wasn't fixed. <laughs> so what that means, I don't know. But my grandma is, was more susceptible to this stuff. Like I am. And then also, I was sleeping at my grandma's house. And she was sleeping, let me sleep in this bed. There was like a king-size bed, but it had a big headboard. And one night I was just sleeping and I heard bam, 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 right on right next to my head. And I jumped up. At this point I was maybe nine years old. I jumped out and ran ah, just screaming into, you know, grandma's arms and stuff. And yeah. <laughs> she was just telling me it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And she sees this stuff all the time. Again, my mom is religious, yes, but she denies most of the stuff she sees. At her house, she told me that she locks her locks herself in the door in, in, in her bedroom. And she hears stuff in the kitchen all the time. But she doesn't want to open it. She does she doesn't like um there's nothing. Again, those are those people that will acknowledge stuff is there. So people that just, just write it off. No. Not it. That's not it's the win. Eddie, do you think that, now for whatever reason, I who knows, we don't know, but do you think that you were meant to see that creature for some reason? No. And, and I think, and I know for sure, because when it saw me, its eyes were like, oh, I've been discovered. Oh, you know, kind of shot and sweat. And then it darted off into the darkness. If it was otherwise, I think then, you know, I, I would have had some kind of um, knowledge of it or more sense of it. I don't know what told me to turn around. Look, that thing could have grabbed me at any moment in time. It moved so fast into the darkness that it had plenty of time to just grab me then before you know, because I made my little right turn, it could have grabbed me right before then. It could have grabbed me in the alleyway if it wanted to. I don't know why it hesitated, why it was just there, but I think it was by chance, not meant to be. I know that this didn't happen in the woods, and it, yes, it happened in a town, a small town at that, right by some houses on a on a trash pickup lane. I know that you stay out of the woods and such, but does that mean that you also don't really go out much at night at all? Yeah, I don't. I don't. If I'm, for whatever reason, you know, inside your home, whatever, that these things cannot come in until you acknowledge it. Yeah, okay. Or, or invite them to anything, right? Now, there's things that do attach to you. I know that the previous home I was living in here, there was an entity in there that attached me from somewhere. I don't know, but it followed me to the house. And I'll tell you several stories about that too. But there was one time I was sitting there in my, on the couch watching the TV in front of me. There's a hallway to my immediate left. And I kept seeing this shadow just peek out of the hallway in the corner of my eye, right? And I said, you know, I'm tired of this. So I grabbed the football. And now, keep in mind, I'm staring at the TV. I had to grab the football. And then um, on my immediate left, but not really, but I could see out of the corner of my eye was the hallway see something peeking out and this thing has been all over the house shadowing me peeking around the corners and stuff I could sense it I could feel it at that point in time I grabbed the football and 
in front of me was the TV above the kind of like a little a chimney place. So it was like a mantel TV top, and then uh, there was a uh, a glass vase, you know, that we had right there in the, next to the chimney. And like, when I grabbed that football, as soon as I saw that shadow peek through, I threw it at it. So I threw the football. It somehow or another bounced back, but it didn't bounce towards me. It bounced towards the TV. So how does that turn left, hit that glass vase, and it then exploded? I don't know. But when I left that home, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're bound to this place. You know, leave me alone. I know for sure. I, won't, I can't even look at that place when I drive by. And it's still, it's still only a couple miles from here. But in this new home I'm at now, like I see little shadows, but it's not as bad as it was then. So the shadows that you see now, do you think that that's an attachment from another property? Or is that something that's just with you all the time? No, I think that it's... it's um, things that are always going to be around. I know for sure that I'm not really being attacked heavily right now, but there's things that actually come through here. They just come through and looking for someone to attach themselves to. And they attach to you. Once they attach to you, it's, it, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So I try to, again, you know, put holy water, Put crosses, put stuff around the house, keep, uh, you know, different things just to, to make sure that you don't have that attachment to these spirits. And they come through and they come around and it's always going to be something. So it's always, to me, it's always a constant awareness thing. So at my work, there's a lot of woods around. So I go out walking around the complex then i stay out of the woods and one day i said no i'm gonna just peek into here just to see what's back there because i always have this knack something saying come here come here come here and i'm scared to to do it so i would say one day you know i said i'm gonna go in just just to peek and see what's what's in there i go walking up into like this little looked like a little trail and i stopped myself right then right before i even got into the woods i said no if something's here it's gonna attach to you and then you're not gonna get rid of it so i i, I felt the darkness and i said nope it's trying to attract me so whatever it is it's 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 things are always there and things i can i can feel i can feel that it's not not good or, or uh, you know any house that i i even i can't even go to some of my friends homes I'm like, I'm like no i'm not going to your house dude <laughs> sorry and do you tell them why or do you not want to worry them no of course not i, I wouldn't i wouldn't say it you would think i'm crazy again i i told this friend of mine all my stories he passed away by the way and now he's he passed away a few years ago but he didn't believe in anything he thought I was freaking nuts, and then um, he would he would he didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in spirits, nothing, anything of the sort. When he passed away, I sensed him in my room because I didn't know him he had passed that night. I sensed him in my room, and I could smell because he used to be a smoker. I could smell the smoke, and I said. Scotty, kind of the strangest feeling came across to me that I believe you now. That was it. But why it just came to me? And then the next day I was getting a phone call. I was like, hey, Scott passed. I did not know. There's things like that. It's just like, wow. So I, I go to this graveyard every year and just give him a, a, a Bud Light because that's his favorite drink. I'll leave a butt light on this, on this stone. So you're pretty used to all this stuff at this point. I mean, it sounds like you have a routine. I mean, you've got holy water. You've got crosses up where they need to go. You put rubbing alcohol around the bed. It's all 
I mean, pretty normal to you at this point. Yeah. You know, it seems weird. I, 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 I guarantee you, everybody's going to think I'm a freaking wacko. It's, it all stems back to me dying when I had blood. How I did when I was a little kid, I think. So many things happened to me at that point that it just opened my eyes or opened my soul to so many other stuff that most people just write off. Do you ever worry that you'll see the creature again? Nah, I don't want to, and I'm not going to. I mean, like I said, it's always an attraction to go back to Indiana, but if I see it again, I don't know. That's not going to be... It's not going to be pleasant. I don't want to. (laughs) I don't blame you. I don't want to. That thing was huge and scary. The biggest thing I've ever seen in my life with arms was just so big. That's the only thing, the biggest thing that reminds me is just the arms were just huge. And it just shot off fast. That's that's everything. everything. Now, even if I do go back to that city, you know, that city probably changed so much. You know? So it's it's not going to be the same thing. It's probably not even that big of a agricultural as it was before or, or now. But no, I'm not going to go into the woods hunting. No, I'm not going to go camping. No. So the chances of me seeing it is it better show up in the city I live in now because that's the only way it's going to I don't. I do not blame you a bit. Trust me. You don't need to go poking any bears. You know. You. It sounds like you have enough going on. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm not trying to. Well, Eddie, if you wouldn't mind, as you mentioned, you you'd send along the the photo of the mark on your neck. Just you know, whatever the best photo that you have of it, and then I will be sure to put that in the show notes at IntoTheFrayRadio dot com, and then for um. Any correspondence that comes in, of course, about your experience, I hope that people reach out and say, I have something similar or whatever it is, or, you know, another podcast, maybe they heard of something similar. That's also very helpful, by the way. I will make sure to forward to you. Well, you know, we can chat about it because I, anytime there's these kind of quote unquote other kinds of stories I tend to get correspondence about it, you know, where it's kind of this square peg in a round hole almost situation, right? I will I will be sure to forward that to you, and then it can be up to you whether or not you wanted to get in touch with the person or you and I could just discuss it. It's up to you. But uh, I, I thank you so much for being willing to come on today. Yes, thank you so much for letting me share. I would like to thank Eddie for joining me on this edition. And before I go, I would like to make a quick mention about Into the Fray on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash into the fray. I'm not sure how much you guys realize support of your favorite shows is so very important and it really keeps us going. So if you appreciate and enjoy what I do on Into the Fray, you can head on over there to patreon.com slash into the fray and check out the various pledge levels. I have recently activated the free seven day trial feature on Patreon for two of the tiers, the $3 and the $5, the $3 gets you early and ad free versions of the show every week. And then the $5, of course, which is the most popular tier, no surprise there, that gets you all of the bonus audio, video, live chat content, private Discord room, private Facebook group. We have a really good time in that group. We have quite the little community of weirdos over there on Patreon. There are, of course, a couple of other tiers beyond that, but the $5, that's all it takes to uh, get you in the door and get you all of the bonus content. But with the free day seven trial, you can go over there, download, listen, watch, check it out. And if you figure it's not for you, just cancel before the end of the seven day trial. So patreon.com slash into the fray, your support helps tremendously. I, I really can't stress that enough. And at the same time, you get extra, extra content. So a quick shout out to the new patrons over the last couple of months. Alan Green, Eli, Mark Muncy, Renee, Jake Boss, Cy B, Liam, Sierra Haskett, Rebecca Smith, Nuna Albert, Stephanie Blake, Denise Laguerre, Elizabeth Bassard, 
Frank, Roger Crosby, Jimmy Moore, David Glassford, Sean Standridge, and Matt Mahoney. Welcome to the dark side, guys. Thanks as always for listening, and we will see you on the next episode.